Hi, in this video I'll be showing you this. It's the Panasonic TX40GX800 and it is available in four sizes. So it's this size which is a 40 inch. It's also available in a 50, 58 and 65. But for the purpose of this video, clearly I'll be showing you this one. But all the features and benefits I'll show you will be the same for each model. So let's get it unboxed and let's have a look. So just a couple of things to point out before we actually get it switched on. The first thing is the bezel on this, as in the, the frame before you start to get to the, the actual glass, is only about five to six millimeters thick. And it looks really, really smart. And I must say Panasonic have done a really good job of designing this range of TVs. Uh, the other thing is the pedestal stand. And I know for a lot of people, it's quite a minor thing, but for a lot of other people, especially a lot of our customers, the pedestal is one of the most important things because what you can find is depending on the stand that you've got some people might not want to buy a separate stand or they might have a coffee table on the side that they want to put the TV on and the size of the pedestal is the most important thing so the size of the stand on this one is 53 centimeters wide by 23 centimeters deep so even if you have got a really small glass stand that's traditionally one of the 60 centimeter stands then it will still fit on. It might not look that great, but what you will find is if, if you have got a stand or if you're buying a stand, really want to go for probably an 80 centimetre or ideally probably one metre stand for it to really look the part. So I'll just show you around the back of the TV and what we've got here. So down the side here we've got the buttons. So you've got the on and off button here. You've got volume and the channel up and down. And then you've got the input select button. The next thing you've got is the mains lead and it does actually come with a right angled mains lead so if you are wall mounting it then it's a, a very easy fixing for it. Talking about wall mounting we've got the so clearly this is a 40 inch TV and on here we've got the 2x200 visa fitting but as you go to all the other sizes so the 50, 58 or 65 then that goes up to a 400 visa fitting by 200 high. So it is a fairly standard fitment, so if you have got a wall bracket currently on the wall, then on the whole, as long as you work to those fittings, then you should be okay. As we come across to the right, you've got some of the traditional uh, components and audio connections here. You've got the HDMI connections, so you've got the three HDMI connections, so you've got one there and then you've got two around the side there. You've got the USB on the side here as well. So you've got one there and you've got one on the back. And you've got the ethernet connection. So if you didn't want to use the Wi-Fi that is built in, then you've got the ethernet so you can hardwire the internet. And then the last but not least, you've got the aerial connection there. So that's around the back of the TV. So when it comes to the setup process, now that we've got it plugged in and switched on, it will ask for the country. So clearly we're in the UK. You've got different viewing environments. Um, this is very much so if, if we were, as we are at a showroom, then normally we'd put it on the shop setting. And all that does is that increases the, the brightness and the contrast to make it look more impressive in a showroom, especially when you're comparing it to a lot of other brands. So for this purpose I'll, I'll set it to home and what we can do is we can uh, connect the TV to the internet so that you can enjoy a lot of this uh, free content. And what this is asking us to do, this is asking us to set the network up. So all you need for this is the, the router and you need the uh, router key that's normally on the back. And what this has done, this has found all of the wireless networks that we've got. So I'll just go through and set this up and get this ready to show you. And then once we've done, now we've done the internet, now what it's doing is it's got the auto setup going. And it is an automatic process. So as long as you've connected the aerial in the side, then what it will do is it says there, it will 
take about three or four minutes and it will pick out all the strongest channels put them in the right order so you've not got to reorder anything so now that we've got the TV tuned in then I'll just show you the remote control and this is a fairly standard type of remote control that Panasonic make and this design they've made for quite a few years now and I must say I I do agree that they should stick with this format because it works really well especially if you are on the aging side where you need buttons that are slightly bigger then again things like the pedestal is important for the stand for some of older generation then the layout of the remote control is as important as some of the other features on the TV so just to briefly show you you've got the the numbers in the middle here for the channel options volume up and down channel up and down and then you've got some of the other internet features like the Netflix button which I'll cover in a moment and the different menu options uh, subtitles and the on and off button at the top left there and if you have got a Panasonic recorder of some kind then as long as it's a fairly current one then by using these options here then for basically that enables you to use the recorder from the one remote control for a lot of the basic functions like play and stop fast forward rewind things like that so that's just really to cover the remote control so just to cover some of the menu options on here uh, when you press the menu button uh, I must say first of all I do really like the layout of this it is very smart and very easy to to read um, I won't co cover everything I was just going to have a quick look through and just to show you some of the settings uh, clearly at the top here you've got the the viewing mode so you've got dynamic here and I'll just quickly show you some of the other options so you've got dynamic which I suppose nowadays is the the main one to have it on and that really increases the the brightness and the, the contrast but if we change that then it just shows you some of the different options that we've got uh, you might not be able to tell from from the camera there but I think for the, for the purpose of this and on the whole in the showroom then normally we keep them on on dynamic and as you go down you've got other settings like the, the brightness contrast and the color and these are really adjusted depending on how you like the picture the next option on here is the HDR brightness setting and HDR is high dynamic range and if you're playing say a, a blu-ray disc through the TV because it is 4k so we recommend getting a 4k blu-ray player to go with it uh, HDR what it will do is it really improves the brightest white and the darkest black colors so really the uh, the picture quality on these are really fantastic unfortunately I've not got a, a demonstration of this but when you see it in the flesh then it is really impressive a couple of other picture features that this has got the first one is the wide color spectrum and that really gives you sort of lifelike colors because there's nothing worse than having a TV where you've got say really red faces and you're really struggling to to get the picture to look lifelike and the other one is the local dimming and this is all built into the TV so there's nothing to set up or nothing to add to it and what this will do this just gives you uh, better color and contrast so uh, as you can see here hopefully you can see that his face is is fairly realistic so as we come over to the sound settings then we've got the different options here so you can have the standard or music or speech stadium and I'll be honest in a lot of TVs nowadays because the TVs themselves are so thin then if you do want a, a really good sound quality then we do recommend getting a sound bar or something to go with these um, what you will find is if you go for a Panasonic sound bar to match up with this then you only have to use the one remote control so it, it is a real advantage to stick with Panasonic for these and you've got the balance so you can alter it between left and right speaker so if, if you were sitting nearer to one side for some reason then you can change the balance on there so the two options here are you've got Dolby Atmos and you've got Dolby Surround so what it will do is when it does detect content that has got Dolby Atmos through it and that would mainly be through a blu-ray disc 
then you've got the option here to have it switched on or off and as it says here you've got the Dolby surround and you can either have that on or off and the main advantage with the, the Dolby Atmos is it gives a really cinematic sound to the TV so if you haven't got a separate soundbar then this can really improve the, the sound experience you get from it. Another feature that which I will point out uh, because not all TVs have it is the audio description so if you are visually impaired then this can be a lifeline for you when you're watching TV so what it does is it will actually narrate for you on the TV as to what's going on so it will show you how to retune the TV because what you will find is that every now and then you do need to retune it and to do this you go into the free view tuning menu you press the OK button go down to auto setup and what it will do there it says all free view tuning data will be erased and then all you do is you just press the OK button in the middle and what it does is that will get rid of all the channels that are stored there and then reset them up as before and on these TVs it is very easy to do that uh, I only mention that because we do get quite a few phone calls on how to retune the TVs so as you press the apps button on the TV then this just gives you a rundown as to some of the apps that are stored within the TV and first of all I'll, I won't cover all of them because most of them you, you will know anyway but you've got things like Netflix uh, you've actually got a Netflix button on here dedicated for the remote control so as long as you've got an account with Netflix then you've got easy access to it um, you've got other options on here you've got YouTube um, as you go into here the apps market then there's a whole list of different apps so you've got all of your, your social media so you can have your social media feed on here if you want to um, you have got the internet browser so if you want to browse the internet on the TV then you've got the option to do that I'll be completely honest the when you're actually surfing on the internet then if you are going to use the TV for the internet then I would recommend getting a wireless keyboard to go with it because using the remote control to type in a web address can be a bit laborious so the the whole experience of using the the browser on really on any TV is not as easy as using it on say a laptop or an iPad but yeah if you're going to use that then I'd recommend just getting a, a wireless keyboard because they're, they're not that expensive nowadays you have got other options down here so you've got smart speaker settings so if you do use a smart speaker like a, an Alexa speaker or a Google Home speaker then they've got the option to link the two up so you can talk through the speaker to enable some of the features on the TV which is really good and clearly this being a smart TV then you have got all of the catch-up services on here uh, what you will find is at the moment you've got the iPlayer, iTV, Channel 4, Channel 5 and you've got uh, UK TV Play and there will be others that over the time they, they will actually appear on here um, what you will find is that with, with any of the catch-up services you might need to sign in so I know with the iPlayer you need to register beforehand before you can use these services so some of the setup can take a little bit longer than standard so on here when you press the guide button this shows you what's on at the moment and you can actually go for the for the next seven days to see what else is on and it's a very easy process all you do is you just use the up and down to, to see what programs are on and what you can also do so normally it would have the previous down at the bottom left and that enables you to actually go back in time so using the the free view play system and it, you can actually go back for the last seven days to see any programs that you've missed and clearly with that you do need the internet so it's not available through the through the normal aerial another thing that you've got is two-way sound connectivity with Bluetooth and what that enables you to do so for example if you've got some Bluetooth headphones I'm not quite sure why I go like that because most headphones aren't that big but if you have got some Bluetooth headphones then it enables you to connect it to the TV really easily and a lot of people nowadays are using these type of headphones mainly because you don't want the, the cable trailing from the TV to, uh, to your headphones so you know, if you are struggling with the hearing or if you've got different people in the house that want the volume at different levels 
then one person can have the Bluetooth headphones while the other person listens to the volume on the TV at a normal rate. So I've just got one last thing to show you and it's the Freeview Play button. When you press that it gives you the options along the top here. So you've got the catch-up services which I think I've, I've pretty much covered anyway. But then you've got another one here called box sets and this feature is, is really good. When you press the box sets it will load up and what it will do is it will display a lot of the box sets that are available and you can look down the list on the left hand side here so if there's a certain uh, genre that you, you enjoy say drama or crime drama but I'll just show you this so if if there's a say one of the programs that you wanted to watch that you've missed then you press the OK button in the middle and what it will do is it will actually list all of the the programs that you that you can watch and it just gives you a brief write-up on here as to what each program is about so I just thought that's something to point out and it, it's not just on this TV but it's a, a feature that is available through the Freeview Play option so if you do get stuck with anything or if you're not quite sure about how to use the TV uh, as with most modern TVs they don't come with a, a thick book of instructions as they used to five ten years ago but you've got this button here which is the question mark or e help and what you can do is you press the button and you've got the keyword search and that just really helps you to find out if there's anything you're not sure about through the TV so I hope you enjoyed this quick video on the Panasonic TX40 GX800 TV please give us a thumbs up on the YouTube video and leave any comments below if you are thinking of buying one of these then I have provided a link below to show you where to get one at a competitive price. Thanks for watching.